Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2018 of Orlando, Florida. Our next speaker is the best-selling author, Mode One. He is a godfather of direct game, and is a returning speaker to the 21 Convention platform. Please let me welcome to the stage, Alan Roger Curry. Kick ass. So as I was saying last year, this chick was sucking my dick. You are here. And I'm back. Because see, for some of you all, I know, because I've dealt with it myself, I know you had a, a little hater voice. You had a voice that said, I'm never going to have a physique like Jack Donovan. I'm never going to be as intellectually profound and articulate as Rolo. I'm never going to get pussy with a camera like Goldman Unleashed. <laughs> So that little hater voice was saying, stay at home, stay at home. Don't fly there, stay at home. But you're here. You're here. So since you're here, I want you to think of all your past disappointments, past frustrations, the goals you failed to achieve, the objectives you failed to accomplish. Put that shit in the past. No pity parties on my watch. When you wake up in the morning, you say, ask yourself, are you ready for the challenge of the next day in front of me? Are you ready for the challenge of the next day in front of you? The past is the past. Extract the morsels of wisdom from those unexpected episodes of adversity. Use it as fuel for motivation and get pumped, get re-energized. You're on a mission. That mission continues. And that's why you're here, because you want to kick things up to the next level. Now, last year when I spoke, I challenged some guys to create a breakthrough moment where they conquered some type of major fear. And I've had at least three guys come up to me who were here last year. One guy, he's not here today, he's one of security. I hope he doesn't mind me calling him up by name. Named Keaton. Now it's funny, Keaton, he's a brother. And if you study how brothers interact with brothers, we're, we're, little, we're characters. Because last year when I approached Keaton, he was just real cool, like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> like, I don't know you. I don't know nothing about you. You don't impress me. But then after my speech, he came to me, he was like, oh my God, man, that was awesome. And so he came to me this year. He said, there were some things I said that caused him to have a breakthrough moment. I had another guy, I'm not going to call him out. If you look at him, he's kind of shy, mild-mannered guy. And people know about the Mo One approach, know it's about being bold and straightforward. And he said he was having a conversation with a young lady. And she challenged him. She said, basically, why are you talking to me? And he was going to give her some bullshit. Then he looked at, I told him, looked dead in the eyes. He looked at dead in the eyes. He said, I'm talking to you because I want to fuck you. <laughs> now, here's the thing. He admitted this to me. Now, externally, he was confident as hell. He was like, talking to you because I want to fuck you. But he said inside, he was like, please don't hit me. Please don't slap me. Oh, my God. Please come with me. So I'm so through a drink in my face. But he said, he's like, yeah, that's why I'm talking to you. Because I want to fuck you. And he said, she just looked at I said, I prepared him for this. I said, she going, when you, when you come with that alpha erotic dominance, women are going to look at you. They're going to challenge you. Like, are you really being alpha with me? She did that to him. And he matched it. He didn't back down. He basically was like, yeah, I said it. And he said they had a stare off. And again, he, he said internally, he's like, oh my God, she's going to curse me out. But she was like, wow. I've never had a guy like say that to me. Like, 
you know, you just, you got balls. You say, yeah, you damn right. <laughs> Breakthrough moment, baby. So from this point forward, you're going to either compete, spectate, or God forbid, quit. Now, there's some people in the last year that quit. There's a guy, Anthony Bourdain. I was actually a fan of his. I wanted to do a travel dating show. I wanted to be to dating relationships, what he was to basically restaurants and chefs. Travel to different cities, find the nuanced differences in the dating culture. So I was a fan of his. But he quit the game. I don't want any of you all to quit the game. I want you to compete. This journey called life, compete. Now, there's some people, they don't quit, but they spectate. If that's their choice, so be it. If they hang around me for too long, I won't allow it. But, man, there's some guys, their sex life is porn hub and masturbation. That's spectating. You watching a guy that more than likely got a better physique than you, bigger cock than you, and that's your like whole life. You spectating, living vicariously through that guy on Pornhub. No oh, man, no, that's no. Compete. Compete until you take, you know, you always hear NFL players when they have a tough loss or NBA players, any sport. If they're on the losing end, but it was a hard fought battle and they're being interviewed, they'll say, man, this loss was hard to take, but I left everything on the floor. I left everything on the floor. So when you take your last breath and let's say, I don't know, if, what is it, St. Gabriel meets you at the pearly gates, whoever in the afterlife might interview you, will you be able to say, I left everything on the floor? All the challenges that came your way? I left everything on the floor? Now, here's the thing. Not only will the challenges of life essentially try to bully you. Unexpected adversity, again, that hater voice try to bully you. And I know somebody sitting in this audience right now thinking about, I don't know, let's call him Billy Johnson, that guy in the fifth grade that just bullied you. you know, Man, that dude used to bully me. Karma came back on Billy Johnson. He's in prison somewhere, somebody's bitch. That boss that unfairly fired you, you're thinking to yourself, <clears throat> fire me. Take solace. He's at somebody's car wash, call him out. <laughs> but here's what you underestimate. The opposite gender will bully you too. They will bully you too. In what way? You better act the way I want you to act, or you're not getting any of this. What did you say? What did you say? You better act right, or you're not getting none of this. And what do they want you to become? The puppy dog. That's what I call it. They're obedient puppy dog. And some guys, they give in to that. Here he is, Frank Yachin was. He so cute. Did you deposit that money in my chicken account? You said you good boy. Did you buy my clothes? You said you good boy. Anybody raising their hand? You want to be a woman's obedient puppy dog? Hmm? It's about backbone, fellas. 
I love pussy as much as the next guy. But I'm not going to sacrifice my sense of self-respect. I'm not going to sacrifice my sense of dignity just for some wet, warm pleasure around my dick. I'm the man, goddammit. And so are you. So let's get started. Last year, I mainly talked about my main book, Mo One. I touched on this, didn't really touch on these two at all. I'm going to touch more on these three. But to give you the quick recap, that's my first book, Mo One. I did a 2017 updated version. My first version of Mo One came out in April of 1999. First paperback version, March of 2006. That's my main emphasis, verbal communication skills. That's underrated. Because, you know, at this conference, you hear a lot of guys talking about the whole alpha and beta, and I'll be talking about that later on in this conversation. But a lot of guys have this impression that alpha means super big muscles. Being six foot five, being super athletic, being a seventh degree black belt. But here's the truth. Starting with my high school days, I've known guys who were so-called tough guys, big muscles, could fight, could whoop any guy's ass. But when they got in the company of women, they were verbal cowards. They were bitches. Now, this is for the guy who said to me, he said, Alan, I, I heard when you speak, you keep shit real. I keep shit real. They were bitches. I listen to every guy. Like, some guys have caught me. There's been a couple guys at this very conference. They, they say, Alan, you study people when you're talking to them. I say, I most certainly do. I listen to how people converse, their vocal inflections, particularly in conjunction with their eye contact. I can read through a lot of facades. Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. A lot of people... Well, I shouldn't say, well, a lot of people in general, but let's focus on men. A lot of men want that magic pill. How can I have sex with as many women as possible, but never be rejected? Newsflash, never going to happen. That's like a baseball player wanting to hit home runs, but never strike out. If you're a baseball fan, you know most of the top home run hitters have the most strikeouts in the league. Anybody can tell me, Alan, well, I got rejected the other day. I, I've been rejected probably more than anybody sitting in here. But that fear can be profound, man, to the point where you don't want to approach women at all. If you're willing to be honest, raise your hand if there's been multiple times where you were scared to approach a woman because of, of a profound fear of rejection. Okay, that's quite a few. Hmm? This is what most guys do when they have a profound fear of rejection. They either avoid approaching a women, women at all or they'll engage in what I call these friendly, flattering, entertaining non-threatening conversations, where they never really lay out any desires, interests, or intentions on the table. Golly, the weather is great, isn't it? <laughs> Golly, do you come in this restaurant all the time? <laughs> and see, there's some pickup artists that will take advantage of that. They'll make you think that if you get a woman to be receptive to friendly, flattering, entertaining, non-threatening conversation that you have a chance. No, you don't. What woman is going to dislike you if you're engaging in friendly, flattering, entertaining, non-threatening conversation with them? Of course she's going to look at you as a nice guy. Of course she is. What criticisms? What what what? prospect do you have of being called a jerk or an asshole because you're engaging in 45 minutes of friendly, flattering, entertaining, non-threatening conversation? Here, 
here's the thing, before I get past this slide, fear of rejection. 